Well, Professor Clements with you as we consider induced EMF in the direction of the induced current for the situation where motion is causing the uh, change in the magnetic flux. So we'll read through the paragraph here and then you're going to make your own drawing of the system from the uh, what the words describe it but a rectangle for the circuit and we're going to have a 2 ohm resistor let's put that off to the left side of your drawing that's connected to two rails that are parallel to each other separated by 1.3 meters off to the right side let's put an aluminum rod and show it sliding back to the left closing the area making the area smaller as it moves we have a magnetic field that's uh, perpendicular to the plane of the area coming up out of the paper and the strength of 0 0.07 teslas numerically we want to calculate the value of the uh, average EMF and we want to find the direction of the current using Lenz's law so pause now and make your sketch and perhaps you have a uh, sketch that looks like this two ohms over on the left the two rails are here again we have 1.3 meters I might add that to my sketch for the width you know, between the two rails 1.3 meters and our rod is uh, uh, tracking back to the left side we know we calculate the EMF with Faraday's law a minus sign the number of turns of wire and then the rate of change of the magnetic flux now the magnetic flux itself is equal to the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of theta where theta is the angle between the magnetic field vector and the area vector the area vector sticks up perpendicular to the area our magnetic field is perpendicular to the area it's coming straight through the paper so we have zero degrees for the theta and that gives a value of one cosine of zero degrees is a one so continuing on with our, our calculation here and taking a look at what we'd have I'd have minus n I would have a change of flux now our area here is a rectangle a length times width so I have a magnetic field and I have let's say we have uh, length 2 after the rail is moved for one second and we have our 1.3 meters for our width and then our initial flux would be B and let's say L1 to where the rod is, the aluminum rod starts with and again 1.3 meters and we have our, our time interval um, so we're calculating flux with magnetic field times area length times width in this problem the width is 1.3 meters you'll notice we have common factors so let's go ahead and factor those out the magnetic field is constant and the width is constant so I have the final position of this rod giving us L2 uh, the length of this rectangle minus L1 and I have delta T so how would you interpret L2 minus L1 sorry I pushed this up a little bit so I factored out the common uh, factors in here N the B is the same in both terms the so 1.3 meters appears in both terms so our delta reduces to length 2 our final position minus our length 1 the initial position divided by delta T well if you notice this is meters per second this is the velocity of the uh, of the rod number of meters per second that it covers so let's put in the numbers so in doing this calculation our EMF would be found to be uh, a 1 for the number of loops of wire it's just one uh, rail we have 0 0.07 Teslas we have 1.3 meters for the width and we have a velocity and our velocity is 3 meters per second 
So take a you know, pause here and uh, use your calculator. Uh, I came up with EMF of minus 0 0.273 volts. That's the size of the EMF that's induced by this motion. The fact that we're uh, reducing the area. As we reduce the area, we're changing the flux. Faraday's law says that when the magnetic flux changes, we'll induce an EMF. Now, what's the direction of the current? Now, the minus sign in this calculation reminds us that Lenz's law says that the direction of the induced current will cause a magnetic field that opposes the change that's taking place. So let's come back to our drawing here. Our situation is the change that's taking place is the flux is smaller as time goes on. In order to compensate for that, to oppose that, we need an induced magnetic field from the induced current. We need a magnetic field from the induced current that is uh, aligning with the original magnetic field. If I call the original magnetic field V1 in the black circles, we're reducing the flux. The induced current needs to create a magnetic field that tries to build the flux back up. It doesn't succeed, but it, it tries to do this. So now you use your right hand. How should you draw the current in the rod in order that the magnetic field due to the current in the rod will create a magnetic field that comes up out of the paper? Try to do that with your right hand. Use the thumb of your right hand. Just guess at a direction for the current. Wrap your fingers around the wire. If you get a uh, magnetic field that's pointed down into the paper, you have to reverse the direction that you're choosing for your thumb. Let's try this direction. Let's suppose that the induced current runs up the rod on this sheet of paper. If I put my fingers, my, my right hand here, and obliterate the whole page, if I put my thumb going uh, in this direction along the rod and wrap my fingers into the space behind the paper and back up, I find they do point outward. This is the correct direction for the induced current. Uh, it's going up the rod and we have a counterclockwise current for the whole circuit. So keep practicing with that.